A meta-analysis of six studies involving 745 patients found that IV magnesium was effective in both rate and rhythm control. The dose of IV magnesium ranged from 3 to 10 grams. Overall, 63% of patients receiving IV magnesium experienced rate control compared to 40% with standard care alone. Rhythm conversion to a normal heart rhythm was achieved in 21% of the magnesium group and 14% in the control group. There were no significant adverse effects except flushing. In conclusion, IV magnesium is effective in controlling the heart rate and restoring a normal heart rhythm in patients with rapid atrial fibrillation who are receiving standard care. Sodium bicarbonate use in the management of diabetic ketoacidosis is a topic of controversy with all kinds of recommendations and evidence. A systematic review was conducted to analyze studies comparing bicarbonate administration to no bicarbonate in DKA. While bicarbonate showed transient acidosis improvement within two hours, no significant glycemic control benefits were observed. Bicarbonate use was associated with increased risk of cerebral edema, hypokalemia, prolonged hospitalization in children, and paradoxical ketosis worsening. In conclusion, current evidence does not support routine bicarbonate use in DKA due to potential harm and lack of sustained benefits, especially in pediatric cases. This study compares the post-ROSC shock management in OCA patients who receive a continuous epinephrine versus norepinephrine infusion. This was a retrospective cohort study involving adult OCA patients with post-resuscitative shock managed with either epinephrine or norepinephrine infusions within six hours of ROSC. There was no statistically significant difference in clinically significant tachyarrhythmias in post ocar patients treated with epinephrine versus norepinephrine infusions after ROSC. However, re-arrest rates and in-hospital mortality were higher in patients who received epinephrine infusions, suggesting norepinephrine may be the vasopressor of choice in these patients. Acute vertigo is frequently treated with benzodiazepines or antihistamines as vestibular suppressants, though evidence of their efficacy is unclear. A recent meta-analysis evaluated their effects, with the primary outcome being change in vertigo visual analog scale, VS, at two hours post-treatment. Single-dose antihistamines provided significantly greater improvement in VS scores versus benzodiazepines. Neither daily antihistamines nor benzodiazepines demonstrated superiority over placebo at one week and one month. Evidence did not support benzodiazepines improving any outcomes for acute vertigo. In conclusion, moderately strong evidence indicates single-dose antihistamines provide superior acute vertigo relief at two hours compared to benzodiazepines. However, neither class appears beneficial long-term based on available data. Further placebo control trials are needed to clarify their relative efficacy. Does contrast nephropathy exist? Many studies on the topic ultimately reveal no convincing evidence. However, it's unethical to perform a prospective RCT, so it's impossible to ever prove this. We don't really believe that contrast nephropathy exists, but simultaneously, we are also afraid of it. Recently, numerous studies and meta-analyses have emerged which don't detect any relationship between contrast administration and elevation of creatinine. There is no coherent evidence that modern contrast agents cause clinically meaningful harm. The vast majority of recent publications suggest that modern contrast agents are safe. Failing to use contrast for CT scans due to fear of nephropathy may lead to suboptimal imaging studies which impair clinical management. Current AHA and ESC guidelines recommend against using nitrates for right ventricular myocardial infarction due to concerns of hypertension. However, this recommendation was based on a small, outdated study. 
This meta-analysis found no statistically significant increased risk of adverse events with sublingual nitroglycerin use in patients with RV myocardial infarction compared to inferior myocardial infarction alone. Adverse events that did occur were transient and easily manageable. The authors conclude that nitrates appear to be a reasonable treatment option to consider for RV myocardial infarction because the potential benefits may outweigh the risk of manageable adverse effects. Early fluid resuscitation is a cornerstone of acute pancreatitis management. However, optimal fluid administration strategies remain a subject of debate. Recent evidence suggests that a less aggressive approach might be preferable. The meta-analysis included seven RCTs and eight cohort studies, with a total of 4,072 individuals. Patients receiving non-aggressive fluid therapy demonstrated a lower mortality rate compared to those receiving aggressive resuscitation. Furthermore, non-aggressive fluid management was associated with decreased rates of complications such as infection, organ failure, and shock. Additionally, patients in this group experienced shorter hospital stays. In conclusion, studies suggest that early, non-aggressive fluid resuscitation may be the preferred strategy for managing acute pancreatitis. This randomized control trial aims to compare the efficacy of high-dose and low-dose nitroglycerin in SCAPE patients. SCAPE stands for Sympathetic Crashing Acute Pulmonary Edema. The primary outcome was symptom resolution at 6 hours and 12 hours. Secondary outcomes included intubation rates, admission rates, length of hospital stay, NTG adverse effects, and major adverse cardiac events at 30 days. The study included 52 patients with SCAPE receiving BiPAP. At 6 and 12 hours, symptom resolutions were higher in the high-dose group compared to the low-dose group. On the other hand, the low-dose group had longer hospital stays, more frequent MACE, and a higher intubation rate. The only short-term adverse effect seen in both groups was headache. In conclusion, high-dose NTG in SCAPE patients results in earlier symptom resolution compared to conventional low-dose NTG without significant adverse effects. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.